This video is sponsored by Streamtech Music, the company behind the brand new instrument Iconic Violin, a solo violin library focused on elegance and precision. In my opinion, string instruments are one of the most beautiful instruments you can write for. Possibly because, as we often do with many instruments, we compare them to our own human voices. They are expressive, emotional, and connect deeply with us. I think this is achieved mostly through how versatile an instrument it can be. There are lots of different ways that you can use the bow and strings to create sounds on this instrument, achieving different effects and changing the mood entirely into something new. These different methods of playing are called articulations, and I want to run you through some of the most common ones you'll find for string players today. Hey, my name is Steve and welcome back to Command Shift New. An articulation in many ways is just like punctuation in language. You have the notes or the words of your sentence, but you need to know how to play those notes or say those words. Should they be emphasized? Should it be harsh? Should it be smooth and delicate? Articulations along with dynamics, how loud and soft something is, play a big role in how expressive the notes are that you're going to play. There are many common articulations that are seen on all types of instruments. And some of these include slurs, playing a note together without a break, staccato, playing short and detached notes, accents emphasizing notes or mikados emphasizing shorter notes. There's also fermatas or pauses that are holding a note. There are sometimes trills as well that play two notes, usually a major or minor second part, and they play them really quickly. You'll find those articulations on many different instruments, but the string instruments do contain some articulations that are pretty specific to them, available due to the design of the instrument. These are articulations that may only be possible because there is a bow that can be used or because there is a string that can be plucked. These are what we are going to go over today. Let's go over some of the most common articulations you will want to know how to write so that you can do expressive and emotive music for string. To demonstrate these techniques, I'm going to be using the new library from Stream Tech Music called Iconic Violin, a wonderful, highly detailed solo violin sample library. It's out today and is for contact and contact player as an NKS ready library. Okay, firstly, I think there are four basic techniques that you need to know for violin or any other string instrument. And I will kind of call these as sort of primary techniques, if you like. Those articulations are legato, the smooth phrases, staccato, which is a short detached notes, tremolo, which is a rapid playing of the same note, and pizzicato, where you're plucking the string with your finger. So let's take a look at the first one, legato. In our iconic violin library, we do have a legato patch, and if you click on sustain and you make sure that legato is turned on, you'll automatically get a legato sound, which is just a smooth sound that if you play one note and then overlap it with the next note, you'll get sort of a continuous sound between the two. This is probably the most common way that you're going to see music expressed or played, particularly for violins, but lots of other instruments as well. And this is often made up of two things, which is phrasing and slurs. Slurs are sort of like short notes that are run together, and you'll sort of see little kind of indications of these notes that are grouped together that should be played as a continuous motion. And phrasing uses the same sort of like arching technique or, or indication on the score, but it's kind of outlining a full complete musical phrase, something that should be communicating together, kind of like highlighting a sentence, like saying this is a sentence and the end of the slur is kind of like a full stop or a comma. I quite like this library because it's got both a fast and a slow legato, which is something that I haven't seen in other libraries before. So playing something slow to fast, you can sort of see it moving and changing in here. Also, there are little stylistic traits as well, such as like the glissando or the portamento, which are types of glides that are happening as you're going into or out of notes. Glissando is sort of like connecting two notes by a slide, playing one note all the way through to the other notes. So just sliding from one point up to the next and playing that whole slide. And you often see that with a like kind of wavy line, a little glissando. Portamento on the other hand is kind of like sliding into a note. It gives you a little bit of a glide into the note, but it's not necessarily the full glissando or the full glide from one note to another. It's just like a little bend into it. I'm a guitar player, so I'll probably use the phrase bend into it. It's not bending the string though, you are sliding into it, but it's kind of like bending into the note of a guitar string. You can achieve that in this library, of course, as well as many other libraries by simply playing the note after the first note a little bit softer on the keyboard, like a very low velocity, and that creates this portamento glide.
really beautiful and a great way of adding expression. Sometimes it's not something that you're notating down, you might just say play expressively with portamento and the player will decide where that might be best suited. Otherwise you can notate it in of course with that gliding line. Now staccato is an interesting one because as we said before staccato is kind of like the short notes, the short detached notes that you're playing, but on a string instrument you've got a few flavours shall we say. Staccato is a short detached note but you've also got spiccato and spiccato is specifically like bouncing the bow on the string. What I mean by this is that staccato you would sort of play on the string. You'd be playing up, down, up, down, and the bow really wouldn't be leaving the string. The notes would be detached most likely by different bow directions, but spiccato they actually bounce off the string. So you're sort of like tapping the brushing the string as you go past. It creates a much shorter detached and emphasized note. In this library you've got a very fast spiccato and you've also got a normal sort of spiccato and then you've got the staccato. And if you hear the difference between these you can really feel the difference that this sort of articulation can make. We've got the staccato here. Now we've got spiccato and spiccatissimo. You can hear it getting shorter each time. Spiccato is often different directions of the bow strokes just like staccato as well but it kind of is a really cool technique for the strings because you can get that bouncing really light flavour. And the fact that you have all three levels in this library just gives you a lot more control as well. Now let's talk about tremolo. Tremolo is basically playing one note repetitively very very fast and this can be achieved on a violin very easily because you've got the bow so you can play the bow by just kind of going one direction, next direction, next direction and so on but really 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 fast. It's somewhat textural but it creates a lot of tension and oh it's really nice. <laughs> Really, really cool sort of sound. Dramatic and tense. Pizzicato though is quite the opposite. We're taking the bow completely out of the equation and we're using just our fingers. So we're plucking the string. This is similar in some ways to staccato because it is naturally a detached sound. You don't get the sustain that you get when you're playing with the bow where you can keep the note going on pretty much indefinitely. With pizzicato though, you do have that detachment. So as you play it, it's kind of plucking the sound. Now I actually played the pizzicato quite fast there at the end but strictly speaking you wouldn't really kind of make that a very fast articulation because it's actually harder for the violin or, or string player to pluck that string very quickly. Unlike a guitar where you might like kind of pluck one way and then the other way or um, you might have a guitar pick or something like that or you use multiple fingers. Pizzicato is slower on a violin and also to make it sound you really kind of have to pluck it quite hard a lot of the time. It's not naturally a very sonorous sound so don't write very very fast passages with pizzicato. It's a wonderful texture though and it creates a little bit of mystery and kind of subdues the sound. It's warmer, it's lighter sometimes, it can be really useful. Now let's take a look at some more articulations that you can do beyond the basics. These are often more specific to the strings as well, but they provide fantastic textures or sounds and sometimes in combination with the articulations we've just seen. The first two I want to talk about is sol testo and sol ponticello. This is basically dictating where you would play the bow, whether it be higher up on the neck or closer to the bridge. So sol testo is actually playing it over the neck a little bit, so moving the bow up along to the towards the fingerboard of the of the violin or the cello. And sul ponticello is the opposite, it's taking it closer to the bridge. Both of these give you very different sounds. Here's sul tasto for a start. It has a warmer, somewhat scratchier sound I think, which is quite cool and it gives it a kind of airiness a little bit to it, which, which is quite nice. But Sul Ponticello brings in this kind of harshness, this metallic and brightness sound, which is also equally as useful. You can almost hear some of the higher harmonics ringing out as you're playing it down by the bridge. And this is actually just like guitar, if you play on the bridge pickup you're going to get a brighter harsher sound. And that's because 
towards the neck, the string is moving in such a way that it emphasizes those higher harmonics. So you start to get brighter, harsher sounds. So that positioning with sul tasto and sul ponticello can really make a big difference to the way that the note sounds. Another articulation that would be a shame if I missed at this point would be flautando. Flautando is very similar to sul tasto, but what it does is it aims to play a very light bow, very light pressure across the position that sul tasto sort of would be at that high up on the fingerboard sort of end. This provides a very breathy, airy quality that is not unlike a flute. And that's sort of where the name is sort of coming from. It's meant to be flute-like. Now this sort of articulation with such a light bow that often has to be moving quite fast to, to actually make a sound, it starts to introduce some of those higher harmonics as well, but there's a lot less control over this. You're probably not going to be playing it as fast as you would play a regular sort of legato passage. So these sorts of techniques like the sul tasto, sul ponticello, and flautando, they're quite good texturally, but they might not be perfect to play for your melodic passage or something like that. They, so they certainly can, and it depends on the player and the ability of that player. But just bear that in mind, is that these are sort of specialty techniques that require more attention from the player to be able to perform these accurately. Now we've been talking about the higher harmonic details of notes, and and that leads me perfectly into harmonics. This is where you play a note, but you're playing it in such a way that it sounds an octave or more above what you're actually playing. And this is achieved by only lightly pressing the string and not pressing the string all the way to the fretboard at particular points along the string as well, so that you're touching that point and effectively dividing the string and causing it to only emphasize the higher harmonics, not the fundamental of the note. Now in this library, the iconic violin, it will be doing this through two ways, natural harmonics and also artificial or false harmonics. Natural harmonics is where you have an open string and you could place your finger lightly on say the halfway point and this would ring out a harmonic. There's also another point about a quarter of the way along the string where if you touch it, and play it is going to play another octave above and produce a different harmonic. Playing these harmonics is using the full open string and just kind of dividing up the string so you emphasize different harmonics above the main fundamental, as I said before. But false harmonics are basically where you shorten the string and then play the harmonic above that. So you would use one finger to place on the string at a particular note. Like if you wanted to play the F sharp as a harmonic, you would play the F sharp note or you put your finger there and then you would use your other finger to lightly rest on the string at about the quarter point and that rings out the note or the false harmonic. I should mention at this point, I am not a strings player. I have got this knowledge from both books and from talking with string players. So it's, it's really good if you have a, a friend or someone that you can talk to who is a strings player, who might be able to show you these techniques or even explain how they do them. So this patch in this library would of course be using both false and natural harmonics because we can see on this keyboard the whole range of harmonics being used. You wouldn't be achieving that just through natural harmonics most likely, you'd probably be doing that through false ones as well. The other kind of extended technique or one that you see often, and this can be not just for strings but for other instruments that have mutes available as well, is consordino. Consordino is basically where you're putting a mute, which on a string instrument would be placed on the bridge to prevent some of the ring or vibrations. This kind of has the opposite effect to something like sol ponticello or harmonics where they're emphasizing the higher sounds, the higher harmonics. The mute is kind of rolling off those harmonics and favoring the warmer sound. If we select consordino here, This muted sound has a kind of warmer sound and when played together in a large group can be quite effective as well. It has this warm, lush type of sound, but it rings out in a kind of sonorous way as well. So I often see this in scores for a whole section of say violins or cellos. 
Now, there are a couple of techniques that I would describe as somewhat special effects in a way. These are often used sparingly and in specific circumstances, and I don't have any examples in this library, but it is worth mentioning all the same, just so that you're aware of them. The first one that I think is important is the Bartok pits or the snap pits. This obviously, probably by its name giving it away, was popularized by Bartok, the composer, and is basically where the pizzicato is happening, but they're plucking it so harsh that the string is snapping back onto the fingerboard of the instrument. This is actually something I do on the guitar as a guitarist all the time because it creates this snap that's just kind of like used somewhat as like an accent, like a heavy accent. And it's a great sound on a string instrument as well. If you've watched any kind of horror scores in the last 20 years, they it's become a very popular technique for that, that kind of tension building, replicating the kind of passage of time, tension sort of sound. It's very popular, you've no doubt heard it. And it is a great way to accent something. So if you want to provide a harsh accent and a snapping type sound like a really definitive bang then maybe Bartok pizzicato or snap pizzicato is right for you. The other one that's worth mentioning is colenio. Now I mentioned this one because this is a technique where you're playing the violin with the back of the bow, the wooden part of the bow. Colenio is a very specific technique that you really should, if you're playing with real violin players, tell them about that beforehand. Most violin players will not want to take their really expensive, lovely, perfect condition bow and turn it around and start abusing their instrument with it. They usually have a particular bow set aside specifically for Colenio, and that bow needs to come along to the rehearsal or the recording session if you're using it. So if you're working with real musicians, make sure you are telling them about the Colenio passages because those are going to be requiring that additional bow. I got in trouble once from, from players who were just like, yep, so we're gonna wrap up the rehearsal right now because I don't have my bow for that. And I was like, huh. Fair enough, lesson learned. It is a pretty cool effect though. It's worth listening to it and seeing if that's something you want to include in your texture. It provides somewhat of a different type of percussive-like texture, I think, but it is something you need to be aware of and certain libraries just won't include it because frankly, it's just, it's abusing a bow. <laughs> So there we go. Those are all the articulations that I wanted to share with you today. And they're the sort of most common and I think best to know techniques for the string ensemble. All of these techniques are really useful. You can find them in a lot of different libraries, but I hope you enjoyed the iconic violin library that I was demoing on today. This library from String Tech Music is available now, so you can jump over and get an introductory price if you've enjoyed it. But otherwise, I hope it kind of demonstrated all the techniques accurately that I wanted to, and you have a better, clearer idea of what you can achieve with a string instrument. There are a lot of tutorials like this on this channel and of course a lot more to come so why not consider subscribing on your way out of this video otherwise though i hope you've enjoyed the video and i will catch you in the next one